Hello, hello, hello. It is Friday Brew at Two. We are here with another live episode of this strange show that I've put together for you. Um, it is Friday today. I know we had a bonus episode on Monday, but today it's the end of the week. There is two weeks to be inspired. That's two weeks. So in two weeks today, I shall have I'll be either waiting to go on stage or I've just come off the stage. And I'm a little bit nervous, uh, really excited. We've been rehearsing today and the there's, there's been loads like going into the rehearsal space today and it, they're just... They're just amazing people. The, the, just the talks that are going out there. I hope I'm not on last because I'm not going to be in a fit state to, to do my own if I have to listen to everybody else's buckets of tears and excitement. But today I've got another um, one of the cohort that I'm going to be speaking, you know, going on that stage with, Sarah Jane Lewis, SJ. She is a mum of two holistic energy practitioner and she's going to be sharing her incredible story uh, about what makes a powerful woman but today she's with us on brew at two hello how hello. are you hello good afternoon thank you for having me that's okay two weeks to go Shh, don't keep saying it <laughs> <laughs> right i'm going to take the banner off so that we did you know we can just forget uh, about that for today there you go <laughs> Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit more and tell us about who you are and what your mission is? Sure. My name is Sarah Jane Lewis. I'm a holistic energy practitioner. I help women heal from their adversity. So people that have maybe been through hard times like I have, and if you come and listen to my talk, you'll kind of learn a little bit more about my backstory. Um, and to be able to create a life that you want, you deserve, you desire. And that's what I help you do. I'm a Reiki Healy healer practitioner, um, a meditation teacher, as well as having oh it's a bit scary now how old I am but 20 odd years <laughs> worth of business knowledge as well so I uh, help women just kind of move forward in their lives to find their identity their passion and their purpose fantastic um we are you are like you're more spiritual than me but I, I think we our I'm I've, I've seemed to have surrounded myself with a lot of people that we we're all in a similar space we're all wanting to help heal others and help them grow into this space that we are now in from you know from where we came from our traumas from our you know adversities like you say um definitely yeah go on, go on. I, was, I was gonna say definitely definitely there I think there are so many women even today that feel stuck that kind of fall yeah. into motherhood whether that's chosen or just happens and you kind of think that's your lot so I think it's uh, motivated and inspiring to surround yourself with women that have kind of through the next stage been they've, through, they've yeah. been, been through it and kind of got to the other side and that's not kind of your kids are old or anything like that it's almost kind of your mindset realizing uh, numerous things that have happened in your life good or bad were meant to happen and just changing the way your perception yeah. of looking at life um, and just giving yourself a bit of a break really to be honest most of the time yeah exactly uh you know a big part of my my course is you know, my mastermind is self-care because we we always forget it don't we we always like you know people say just look after yourself first because you know you you put your own oxygen mask on first because you can't deal with anybody else but as a parent you it's always at the back it's always the last thing you know you go out to the shop you spend a million pounds on your children <laughs> and you're in tatters you know you're in ripped jeans and whatever because 10 year old pants out. yeah exactly <laughs> maternity cars <laughs> Yeah. No, definitely. Know. And I think so many people, I know I did, I just took for granted all my free time before I had kids. And then you got a baby and then, or a two year old or six year old, and you realize actually, what did you do with your time before? Yeah. You don't, you don't practice self care before you actually need it when, when it's most no. important, when you have so much pressure on your shoulders, keeping humans alive. I mean, it's one thing keeping yourself alive, but <laughs> little ones exactly. is a bit harder and stressful. Um, 
but it's something that people should learn prior to to that situation but even if you've never practiced self-care or or put yourself first it can happen in the smallest of ways in regards to it might sound counterintuitive getting up a little bit earlier and having a bit of time to yourself to get your things done to read a book to sit quietly to listen to music to watch your favorite tv program at six in the morning just i don't know it feels (laughs) a bit naughty with a cup of tea yes yeah yeah, before everybody gets up um it's just finding little ways and then once you find little ways you notice the difference and then especially when you stop you notice actually how much yeah. that benefits you i know that i do that from time to time I'm like, oh i feel fine I'll, I'll do this this and this and and then all of a sudden my battery's yeah. low and it's like oh right i need to stop um but just start small that's fundamental start small uh, a bath a walk asking for help that's one thing i never did never ever ever asked for help yeah. because and, i thought it was I a felt- sign of weakness I, I felt guilty. I, I mean, my mum helped me no end. And I felt almost ashamed when I was speaking to others that, well, actually, I didn't do it on my own. I, I've got my mum here. But, you know, two babies all at once. And uh, and the caesarean section on top of that, the, like the first time round, it's not an easy thing to do. My husband worked away a lot, so he wasn't... He was, here at night but he wasn't here for bedtimes he wasn't here for morning like school mm. one time and you know my mental health was failing so I had I couldn't do it I couldn't have done it without that help so don't sit there and and think that you know you have to do it all yourself you don't have to you, you go on YouTube and you see um like vlogs that have do it all, or I've done it all, or you know how to do it all in a day, or whatever. Perfectly you don't have to made, do that. perfectly made up women with their hair done and makeup yeah. on and clean clothes. I mean, God, <laughs> my kids aren't even <laughs> with me, and I look like a state today. But this is it's fine. I'm cleaning the house. I, um, I have to check if I've got toothpaste. For... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, there's so much. I say pressure. Is it pressure? I think I we think put we ourselves put... under it. Yeah, because you see other people, you see every, other people's highlights, you see that that five minutes of them looking glamorous and lovely or coping or managing to have a conversation without trying to struggle to find the words. And, you know, they just have to seem to have their shit together. But for the other 23 hours of the day, they might be falling apart. And I think... Um, there's this I mean I know when I had children very I mean mine are six and nine now so I, I kind of feel like I'm in this period where life is so much easier they're a little bit more self-sufficient I'm not changing nappies they get themselves washed and changed I mean it's amazing like there is light at the end of the tunnel if you've got little ones um but I remember right at the beginning just like waking up and they're still here oh my god they're still like <laughs> that sounds awful honestly how the hell am I gonna do it today yeah yes and it wasn't that I was wishing anything bad to happen it was just like the realization almost like the groundhog day like yeah. oh I've gotta I'm do it do again, it again today. <laughs> yeah. yeah I know what you mean I, the, there was times when I've like said or thought to myself I, well I, even I've told my mom I, I'm like I can't do this anymore I'm not doing it anymore take them away just I, what I don't know how to do this I don't know how to be a mom I don't know how to be an adult I, I, I just you know I, everything's up here and I can't I just just go I can't do it mm. <laughs> she's like but you've you've got to do it and I think in a way that was me saying you need to help me because I, I have no idea how to get from like where I was then like overwhelmed burnt out even probably without really realizing it to where I am now I I didn't know how to navigate that step so but people like yourself you know I I started doing yoga and I've found ways to cope with Mm -hmm. four children Mm. sometimes it feels like a million Um, (laughs) uh, yeah you just you pick up tips along the way or you you know you join groups like like what we have going on Facebook and you just you do learn to cope with it you do you do learn ways to get round that overwhelm and definitely definitely and I think you said there it's just you 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 vocalized your thoughts and for me I didn't have that it was just internal this monologue of you're doing shit you're crap your house is dirty 
uh, how, are you feeding the kids the right things you haven't got dinner ready oh, the house yeah. is dirty everybody's good but like constant you're rubbish you're rubbish you're stupid you're stupid you've got to do this you've got to pay the bills you've got to clean the house you've got to do the food shopping and it was this constant constant pressure and didn't have anybody to kind of go vocalize that well and then sometimes yeah. the thoughts are really really dark and I think all all I can suggest is talk to somebody find somebody a friend yeah. a mother and make them listen if they dismiss you going oh yeah well that's life because that's what I got well yeah <laughs> that's what it's like to be a mum and like well <laughs> yeah. yeah I you've don't want to get on with it you've got yeah. no choice yeah but you kind of you need an outlet you need somebody not to try and fix it for you just to listen and I I joined NCT groups. They were the, I mean, apologies if you've got an amazing NCT group, but I didn't. <laughs> they were all the Gina Fords and the super nanny yeah. kind of realm of um, routine and your baby has to be to see. I remember one a couple um, that two weeks after having a baby, the husband booked them into a hotel so they can go and have Nookie. And she had this huge expectation just to kind of just get back to normal. Yeah. And she was just like, well, I've got a kind of keep him interested he's younger than me I don't want him thinking I'm this that and the other and I was just like oh my god that's crazy no. that's what, I mean that didn't happen to me that was like two years until the next episode happening <laughs> <laughs> wasn't two weeks um but the NCT group was very very kind of focused and regimented and I just didn't oh. gel and what I found I didn't understand this term at the time was something called crunchy mamas did you ever hear that term oh no what well no they were just a little bit kind of out there a little bit different kind of almost they wore slings they carried their babies in slings oh, yeah. breastfed uh, just a little bit kind of more hippie so I kind of found yeah. a little bit of kind of a little the bit mom more... that I'd the mum that I'd got in here before I had the kids, I think is what mm. that term is. Yeah. Oh, that was, okay. That's who. That's who I was gonna be. Kind of this bare, then, barefoot mama, you know, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the kids arrived, and yeah, th it was not like that. In fact, <laughs> that is most of my talk. Is this is most of my talk? The the vision I had in here isn't what life was like out there. And I think that's what it's like for most people. I think a combination of hormones, expectations, trying to still live in your life the way it was before kids, muddled into this chaos of screaming, pooing, crying children. It's just just overwhelmed exactly. for your whole body, isn't it? It's just yeah. Everything. Yeah. And I think you you go to work or you know, you don't go to work, whatever. But if you've got a job before before children got a job clean the house think oh god i could do with a cleaner or you know i'm str uh, you know this is hard work and then you put kids on top of there and it's like oh this is a whole new level of i can't do this this is but a whole know, new level the worst thing that nobody really talks about people don't teach you how to enjoy it for what it is no exactly that people do not talk about that bit people There's there seems to be two camps, I reckon. Mm. There is the, this is easy, peasy, I'm a perfect mum, my house is immaculate, blah, blah, blah. And then there is, the, this is shit, I can't do it, kids are awful. You know, there's, it seems like you only ever see those two extremes. I mean, mm. You can't see my hands. But you only ever see those two extremes. And there's no, there's no in between that says, yeah, it's hard, but this is a way to get out of that hard work and it doesn't have to be perfect, mm -hmm. just like it doesn't have to be shit all the time. You know, mm -hmm. you can have that middle. And I think Definitely. that's where like people like you and me come in, you know, our community, our the work we're, we're setting up to help others mm -hmm. to get to where they want to be and start living that life, like you say, that that's full of more passion and, and, yeah, and enjoying the kids more and that's the thing I don't think I did for a long time because you're busy 
trying to do it all trying to juggle it all trying to go to baby groups because you feel like that's what you're meant to do oh my god I don't know about you but I couldn't stand them and the second time see, round when I, I had Joseph I didn't go to any I just I couldn't see I went to I went to a sure start center a children's center actually they were the best ones yeah the sure starts yeah. yes yeah yeah and I would spend all week there with the first two Mm. But again, I was in postnatal depression state. I was in over, I was in like autopilot all of the time. I missed so much of their childhood in in my head because I was in my head all of the time. I was never yes. with them. Yeah. But even even so, sure stop was an amazing like handhold. You know, new parent. This is what life is like. There are other people that you know aren't sleeping through the night. There are you know you're not on your own. Um, yeah so even then they had me my back when I had you know the postnatal depression because it wasn't treated it wasn't diagnosed and they were the only people that look sort of said look I'm here mm. uh, come, and, come and use us you know and they've gone now haven't they the sure start centers there are there are still a few about but the funding okay. is diminished you know like mm. any government thing they cut the spending and yeah I could get on a whole new level of <laughs> we'll not go on that tangent because we could be here all day no but yeah. it was um they were definitely the better ones I, I did enjoy going to those but I was told not to come because um the lady said she said I don't think this is for you and I was like oh oh okay and she said these aren't your kind of people and it, I don't think she was being rude. I think she was just because it was in like, I think there were young mums from the local council estate and maybe it, she thought that I wasn't um, suitable for that. I don't know. But funny enough, I, I grew up in a council estate and the, like it yeah. was difficult. I needed somewhere to go and then felt like I didn't fit in there and I didn't fit in with like the posh yummy mummies because I didn't have all my shit together and I didn't do the Gina Ford thing. And yeah. I found my my group of friends from through a sure start center. We went to the um like they they'd put on group classes of whatever like mm. we sewing or knitting or you know just baking or we we even joked that we'd go to bricklaying if it was put on just so <laughs> that we could have a 5 minute you know cup of tea in the hot cup of tea and the kids were taken care of in the creche. But but I met my my best friends through sure start you know they oh wow are, yeah i i've lived in where i live now or you know since i was born and never had the friends that i have now and and that's because i've had the kids and i've had that sure start interaction but without sure start i don't know how i would have ever met them but wow that's but amazing. i know what you're saying about they have a they have a like a, a duty to mm -hmm. find out the um a certain criteria of family mm -hmm. and that and they you know they it almost pushes the others away yes like poor income you know single parent whatever they have to tick all these boxes and you sometimes think well hang on a minute i, I went there because of my mental health I, you mm -hmm. know i'm not low income i'm not um single parent but i need this place you know it, it for my mental health not just because i've got no money or mm. you know, i think sometimes that mental health thing is left off the list somehow but yeah i know i know i can almost i can see why they might have said that you know yeah because yeah i guess i wasn't from that low income family that yeah. lived in the estate so I wasn't a priority you but weren't on you weren't on their tick box of no no precisely, that, precisely result, yeah. that but they were a great facility um but I just think the whole process of motherhood and just the tiredness and the like you said the mental health it's it's tricky I don't think it's something you can avoid if so what's the right word for that I think if it's going to happen and kind of maybe you're yeah. more um in that kind of Oh, I can't think of the word. Let's see, this is it. I can't get my words out. <laughs> it doesn't stop after the kids have grown up a little bit. Um, I think life experience prior to motherhood, kind of yeah. your expectations of what motherhood, like what your mother was like or wasn't like, that you then want to kind of 
fulfill yourself really kind of determine those expectation levels and I think the money that you have to pay I mean you must have found this having twins having two lots of everything it's not cheap as well and that's no. an extra financial pressure and then they grub out of everything every two minutes and then it's just a... yeah. we we actually sold everything because mm. who, who'd have thought you know you'd have twins again and my husband had to sell his car to buy my the pushchair for the second set Oh wow! And he was like that. That pushchair cost me my car. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's not cheap. It's not, you know, and that affects your mental health as well. Yeah, and don't get me started on childcare either, because you know, if if you've got more than one in child, well, even one is expensive. But I, there was no way that I could go out to work and put the kids in care, you know, in childcare, because I couldn't. No. I couldn't earn enough to put them in there. Well, at one point, it sounds a bit posh, but at one point I worked out the cost of having a nanny uh, versus kind of childcare. And it worked out cheaper just to have somebody a couple of days a week that I was out the house rather than in the, keeping the kids in their own environment from early in the morning till late at night. It worked out cheaper to do that than to, to go and ship them off somewhere. And again, it wasn't I had to keep my job so I had no choice you just have to pay it out because uh, you think about the long-term benefits of of that kind of this is short term the kids need in childcare until they go to school so I need my job for that kind of longer period um but no it all weighs on you and sometimes well in my case it definitely kind of was all on my shoulders all my responsibility yeah. kind of all of that and that resulted in the breakdown of my marriage I just it just didn't couldn't cope with it at all it's no. just there was a lot of selfish behavior a lot of um issues there that um once you kind of get your head above kind of like right you're coping the kids are a little bit older you go do you know what <laughs> <laughs> I've done this all on my own and <laughs> had no appreciation or um, value to kind of what it's like. And all I can stress if anybody is to have open conversations, kind of talk things through. Um, if you're unhappy, kind of from a mental health point of view, share that. And if it's not reciprocated or, or you're not getting the help and support you need, go and find it together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because children can have a big, big impact into your relationships and how successful or not successful they are, as in my case. Yeah. So, what? Tell me. I want. I want to know a little bit more about the business side of you. Um, we've talked through the motherhood side. You know, you've mentioned that you are now separated, divorced, divorced. From, yes. From the children's dad. Tell me about where your business now fits in with with that life and how you you got to where you are now uh well the business is my new baby I guess in in some respects um now the kids are a bit older um so I still have a full-time job because being a single mum kind of independent mum um still need to pay the bills pay the mortgage and kind of keep everybody going um so I still have that day job and then in between I do uh, one-to-one and group coaching sessions with clients um, where I support women to kind of get unstuck. What I found, and I'll just backtrack a little bit, during lockdown, um, I finalised all my personal training qualifications, nutrition qualifications, and lockdown happened. And I was like, right, it's now or never. I'm going to start doing virtual fitness classes. Joe Wicks kind of beat me to the kind of global domination on that buff part, but... <laughs> I was still there in the background doing my bit for my little community and um, doing workouts and trying to help people with nutrition and fitness. And it was brilliant, really good. Loved it because I felt good. Lockdown felt a little bit like a holiday in some respects yeah. because I had this connection with other women and we were all working out together. But it became very, very evident kind of later on in the year as we got to winter and the next lockdown and the le next lockdown is that there was more to kind of this whole journey of wanting to lose weight, wanting to look better, wanting to feel better. And it took me on a personal journey to add more qualifications and skills to kind of what I do um, because I realised that 
what happens is is that we use food and exercise as a way of punishing us for not being good enough for not being worthy for not being that perfect size 10 beautiful got it all our shit sorted kind of person yeah. a mother a woman and um for me I thought that's not healthy I do not want to be adding to that pressure to another woman's shoulders when she has balancing all this stuff in her life and then punishing herself with massive workouts and barely any food so went down this route of just understanding myself and what what happened to me and then realized is that there's so much more to this and it's about helping women um change their mindset more than anything realize how amazing they are that everything they do what they've achieved has value even if you don't think it yourself and it's it's kind of being that bounce the bounce board what's the word bounce <laughs> sounding board that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> sounding board and helping people work through like why do you think this about yourself what what yeah what makes you believe that you are this type of person or you're not capable or you're not lovable or you're not valued and then using um because I'm very much as you mentioned at the beginning very much into the woo the spiritual side is understanding and helping people realize that there is more to what we're doing right now there's more to us yeah. we are energy we are um there's things to learn in our life and if we've experienced hardship is kind of flipping it on its head and going why why did that happen what have you learned from that what are you not going to do again in the future what have you learned what lessons um and there's this whole journey that you go through as part of that and I think we get very much kind of caught up in the now doing stuff thinking and wishing and hoping things get better but don't actually make the steps or the actions no. to actually make that happen and that can happen with your your relationships your career yourself your mental health um i've got one client at the moment in the course of three weeks she has just shifted so much from being over anxious not achieving much at work not achieving much in life to getting a promotion to eating exercising not for punishment for pleasure kind of understanding how to fuel her body in order for it to feel better and the knock-on result of that is that you do lose a bit of weight but it's it's done in a way that is in a healthy way not healthy yeah. way manageable way um and setting goals I mean goals is something that you think oh do it I would like a job or I would like to do this I would but people just kind of let it float off and never do anything about it so working together with people that need my help is kind of offer that structure and yeah. uh, support to actually put this action into place to get to that next stage fantastic so and that led you to be inspired i assume yes well my woo woo this is when i had a, a reading done and this lady said um you're going to be on stage and there's going to be cameras and you're just going to kind of like it's going to wow. be a really pivotal pivotal transformation changing point in your life come the kind of uh winter solstice and i was like yeah 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 whatever and then um Danny's thing came up the tour like the the course and then when I learned about actually what was involved I was like oh, oh my God, yeah. maybe that's what I should do and I do I don't know about you but I do tend to just close my eyes and press buttons and then worry <laughs> yeah. about it later yeah. I'll fit it in I'll, 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 do, it. I'll do that yeah, yeah. it's like in two weeks time and then <laughs> yeah and then yeah we need to center ourselves and just go and do it i think we do we do i'm looking for it's going to be one hell of an experience it'd be lovely to yeah. meet everybody i've been chatting to everybody for so long online it's uh it'd be uh yeah, yeah it'd be lovely just to have a natter in real life and a cup of tea yeah so can you tell us a little bit about your talk can you yeah, 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 yeah. no um so what i do in my talk is kind of find that point in where life changed for a lot of women and it kind of happened kind of 70s and 80s really when life became a little bit more about the glam the beauty the perfection and then go on to um to tell you everybody my transformation my story what happened to me and then my expectations or my view of what makes a powerful woman in 2021 and beyond and what it would be like for our daughters and granddaughters in the future to, to live this avatar that I uh, create oh it sounds good I can't wait 
it's a bit I, naughty I as well i'm trying to keep it clean but i do uh there's a, a few naughty bits in there i can't wait to just listen to everybody else's as well I, i'm really excited if it'll be fantastic oh <laughs> yeah i think we're all going to be wanting to vomit <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've really enjoyed like offloading with you. It, it's because we've never really spoke, have we? Only like du like during group sessions, the, the sessions, yes. and yeah, yeah. So it's nice to just have a chat with with fellow cohorts of you know this September. Oh well, we're gonna have more chats for sure. It'd be uh, lovely just to catch up and yeah, just be nervous yeah. together and uh, <laughs> yes, have some nice food, some time away from the kids and yeah, yeah I, a, I in a, hotel, a couple of nights in a hotel room I know I haven't done when was the last time I was in a hotel I can't remember a couple of years I don't I might not know what yeah. to do It'd be strange <laughs> not having to wash up my food and <laughs> clean um but no it's going to be amazing it's going to be good fun it is yeah is there anything else you would like to like tell the listeners the viewers anything about you anything yeah, I mean, I have a free uh, meditation that people can download. It's a self-help guide about creating and visualizing your future self. It's really powerful. And I tell you that from personal experience because I've been doing it for a long time now. And the meditation and visualizations that I was doing six, nine months ago are actually coming into fruition. I did it as just as a little bit of a, um, a little bit of downtime, you know. I love meditation. Yeah. I love visualization. It's nice to play and kind of go, oh, what if life was like this? What if life, yeah. what would it feel like? And it's bloody happening. It's powerful. These things, these meditations, this particular kind of vision of future me is happening right now. And it's uh, exciting. So I offer that for free. If you go to www.sj-lewis.com forward slash meditation you can download it for free and uh, if you come to be inspired you'll get it as a, a freebie in the swag bag with some chocolate brownies as well oh yeah i've seen these chocolate brownies they look <gasps> delicious oh honestly yeah. you, you need a ticket just for the, swag the chocolate bag. brownies <laughs> the, yeah, yes. the chocolate bag brownies and the swag yeah definitely <laughs> um i'll i'll let you leave the links in the comments of the oh thank the you yes thing, the the episode whatever i keep calling it a show because that's what danny calls hers but i, I feel Do you like know it could be whatever you want it's not you know i'm not really that professional so maybe it's not a show i, I don't know anyway it's there i she, quite like it, SJ brew it too. Be, yeah you have to have a brew at two <laughs> i've always well, got not. a brew in hand have you yeah i'm not doing so good today i'm cleaning the house so I'm going to have to go because I, I could chat all day, but uh, it, it's going to yes, be go, go, go. Time very, very soon. So I'll let you go just a moment. That was amazing. And talking to SJ, I, as I say, we've only ever spoke during the group, like coaching sessions with Danny for the Be Inspired event. Um, but it's nice to just chat one to one with people. So I'm sorry if it was more like a conversation between us both. I hope you got something out of it, our talk today. Don't forget, those tickets are selling fast. Um, Danny this morning has made some big announcements of the people that are joining us on that stage. Um, I, I know for one, there's Sandra from Gogglebox. That's allowed to, to go out there now into the internet so she will be joining us on that stage too as well as some amazing other guests um so don't forget go get your tickets i'll leave a link to the tickets below and sj will leave all of her links so you can go and find her um in the comments too but that'll be all for today uh and i will see you i think on monday with another guest thanks for joining <laughs>